team here, including uh, our um, esteemed consultant, Greg Bird, who's um, conducting this session. Um, Paul, just very quickly um, at Chisholm, I can confirm your dates for your migration too. I'll send you an email about that. Just prompted me to remember remember that one. But welcome everyone, and uh, over to you, Greg. If anybody's got any questions, just stick them in chat. If you want to ask me something directly, or or Bernadette, Eric's here as well. Um, so we've got a good um, a good team here from EWorks to uh, support this this work. So over to you, Greg. Perfect, thank you. So what I'm delighted by is the fact that we've got a good um, and diverse audience. And so that prompts me to go backwards a little bit before I go forward. Some people that are part of the eWorks tag have seen some of this before, but I think it's really great to get a bit of context behind uh, user tools, what, what value they can give, some of the design thinking leading up to some of the tools I'll show you. And then later in the session, we will get into technical because some of this is a technical piece of work. But even those who are not necessarily the technically minded people, I hope will get great value out of it because a lot of it is about the thinking, the design, the user interface of Moodle and how you can best uh, feature and explore that with your audiences, whether they be a student audience, whether they be a teacher audience. So there's a really strong role for an instructional designer in all of this process. And in fact, some of the tours that I'll be showing you are ones which I've worked very closely with Alona at GoTafe with her instructional designer hat on to design because she knows very well the needs of the organisation and the needs of her clients, which are principally the teachers. So um, I think that for even if later in the session we get into the technical weeds and you get a bit lost in that, I don't think that's going to be a disadvantage because there are some great user tools which are available just off the shelf that will be a great primer to, to what I show you. So I'll start by even indicating what a user tour is because some of us may not have met one. And I'm going to draw your attention to kind of my right hand window for this. So you can see I'm in Moodle. I've all, I'm going to trigger a user tour in this and there's a little button that gets added to your uh, Moodle courses if you have user tours on, which is this reset user tour on this page. I'm going to do that now and you'll, it'll start the user tour off. And what a user tour really is, is a set of guided instructions which take a user through features of the screen, but it does it in an interactive way. So you'll notice, first of all, I have a message with a next button. As I click on that next, it progresses to the next instruction. It highlights part of my screen and gives some um, text descriptions about what the main features of that part of the screen are. So, in this user tour, which I'll get to later on, I'll show you the anatomy of this. It's a tour to induct people into what for GoTafe will be their new theme for next year, which is Snap. And Snap changes things quite differently from um, what GoTafe is used to. And so this is part of our change management process. We're using this not just as a, um, a teaching and learning tool, but to actually inform and, and communicate some of the things that have changed in Moodle um, since the last time they viewed it to now. So you can see that what in essence is happening is it's guiding the user through the important screen elements that may be necessary for them. The way that that happens is by cooking some instructions in to the user tours features, which is in our left-hand panel, um, that guide them through those steps. But you don't need to necessarily build something from ground zero. We're very, very lucky that there are a whole lot of user tours that are already just sort of waiting on a shelf for us that we can simply download, deploy in our Moodle, and then just change things to protect the innocent in essence, just um, slightly tweak and adjust the user tours that already exist to meet local need. So you'll notice in my uh, left-hand window, I've got a very long list of user tours. I haven't written those, I've only written two of them. Most of these I've simply got off the shelf. And the way that I did this was if, uh, I should mention uh, <coughs> at the start of things, that to create user tours or upload user tours, this is a system administrative function. So if those people that are in the room are not themselves sysadmins, 
they're not a Moodle administrator, you would need to work with your Moodle administrator at this point to do this step. But I think even if you're not that Moodle admin person, knowing its capability is really, really critical. So if I, if in the user tour areas, I can go to an area called the tour repository, which is effectively a collection of tours that have been de designed and contributed by others, which I can simply download and use and customize for my own needs. So this is basically jumped us across to Moodle.net. You'll notice that there's hundreds of uh, user tours. Those user tours defined by their purpose, um, the language that they're in, because you know Moodle is, is multilingual and there are user tours in other languages than English. I should mention, by the way, I've chosen to sort this by language. Uh, it's quite a useful uh, feature to sort this in a way that's useful to you. And then you can see now that there's a whole lot of tours that we can simply just harvest and start to use. There are tours that help us when we're editing a quiz. I might make this text a little larger just in case people can't see that. Uh, creating an assignment, setting up a chat, creating a choice activity. So that was actually, I think, what um, <coughs> Jeff was asking about earlier on. So you can see that there are a lot of these uh, tours ready for us. This column this here is part of the technical setup, but it'll be part of my discussion later on about what triggers these tours to happen. So if I use this assignment as an example, it gets triggered when part of the, the URL, part of the web link includes add equals assign, because when you add an assignment to Moodle, it kicks you over to a website which has this in its URL string. So basically this user tour will kick in when someone is adding an assignment. If I want to, I can uh, preview that, which basically just gives a bit of a description about that user tour, who contributed it, etc. But importantly, we get to download it. And by downloading, we're making a copy of that that we can subsequently upload to our own Moodle. So I simply need to click on to this link. It's a type of file, which is called a JSON file. You don't really need to know that very much, but what it, uh, is important to us is that now that I've downloaded that file to my computer, I can subsequently upload that again to now my own local copy of Moodle. So if I return over to Moodle, which, which screen have I got it open in? My problem is I always have too many tabs. Here we are. There's also an import tour feature. So now that I've, I've downloaded the tour that was provided by somebody else, I can import that tour. And that simply involves me uploading the file that I'd previously downloaded. And I'm just gonna to go to my downloads. Here it is here. And I can upload this now. It just so happens I've already got this one, I've uploaded it previously, so I'm gonna cancel out at this point, but you can get the principle of it, that when I complete that upload, I'll have another um, user tour in my collection here. Now, what's interesting to me at least is that most of the user tours that are arrived to you off the shelf are about that editing teacher capability, the designer, the builder, the person that's actually assembling your Moodle course. So many of the off the shelf ones are really designed for the person who is constructing your Moodle for you. Sometimes that's the same person as the teacher, sometimes it's not. It depends on um, your own implementation of Moodle and how you do that. But you'll notice that most of the common capability of Moodle, like adding a file, adding a book, a wiki, all of the tools that we might now become very uh, familiar with, have kind of off the shelf ones. So let's have a look at an example, this adding a label one. Recall that a label is just something that sits on the screen that you can add content to. So if I look to this adding a label tour, you can see that there's um, a description of the tour. You can see that it's got some instructions about where that tour applies to, and it's whenever you add a label. And then there's some menu options on the right hand side. These menu options include um, the, this, it might be a little hard, I'm gonna zoom the screen up. 
Oops, I was too quick. I'll go back a bit. You'll notice that, that one of the options looks like a bullet point list. That's a really important um, icon because that gives you basically the recipe for this. So the recipe says, display this label, put this content into it. Where am I going to display at the middle of the page? And so it goes on. So I'm going to have this set of instructions on the left-hand side. I'm going to complete the same things on the right-hand side. So you can see how the instructions relate to the user tour. So if I now were in my content to, for instance, create a learning activity, and I want to create a label. Okay, we can see now what the relationship is between the recipe of this user tour and the content that appears on screen. So we can see that the uh, title is label introduction that gets displayed here. We can see the contents of it simply matches the contents that you see here. And then the target, this is the interesting piece. This is the bit to say, well, whereabouts do you want to display this message? And the easiest and simplest way is you just display it in the middle of the screen, which is what we're doing here. But that's pretty straightforward. We quickly get into areas which become just slightly technical. So the next set of instructions, I'll make this a little bit smaller so it fits the screen a bit better. Oops, <laughs> I jumped out of the user tool accidentally. Let me go back in. The next set of instructions highlight just part of the screen. And so this is where you need to have someone within your team that's got some technical skills because they need to be able to identify what is it about that part of the screen that I can use as my hook to attach my label to. What bit of the screen am I going to highlight? And at this point, you do need to know just a little bit of something called CSS. CSS is the way that uh, web pages get styled up, but they also provide for uh, this tool, the hooks and handles to decorate the right bits of the screen. So in this case, it says, edit, highlight the bit, which is the bit which is called editor underscore atto underscore wrap happens to be this region of the screen. Later, I'm gonna show you how you find those. So um, if, if you're not familiar with CSS, no biggie, I can, I'm gonna do a walkthrough, we're gonna build one from scratch, and I'll show you how you find these hooks and handles. Um, but at this point, can I, I'm just gonna pause just for a second and, and open it up to the crowd. Are there any questions at the moment about user tools? Remembering that I'm going to show you later on how to build one from scratch. Anyone got any questions at this point? Feel free to either go on mic or, or enter them by the chat. Well, I'm going to take silence as my permission to, to proceed, but keep firing questions along the way because there's more value in it if you if you get steer this in the way that you need it to be steered. Um, so if we continue then through the user tour, we can see that the next Set, uh, set of instructions is going to be about common module settings. Let's have a look at that. Move over. Okay, it's highlighted the part of the screen which is about common module settings. Gives a description about um, what that might be. If we hit the next button, it goes down to restrict access. So you can kind of fairly quickly, even if you don't understand this bit, you can see the relationship between the content and the selectors. And one of the things which I think scares people a lot is this stuff in the middle. That's the tricky part. But you don't even need to know that to, to start being productive with user tools because someone's already done the hard work for you. They've already written the instructions. They've already um, put the content onto screen and it becomes then a much more simple process for you just to adjust the words. So for instance, um, if we were, I, I, I'm just going to bounce back to the chat. I can see some activity there. Have an overview for all staff and students. Welcome to Moodle. Ah, yes, perfect. I'm going to show you exactly the approach, Shiraz, that we're taking with GoTake for that. 
um, and how we're doing using user tools as a change management tool. So I'll show you that in just a sec. So if we were to um, take a really sort of a lo-fi approach to this, rather than needing to know how to write all of this stuff, we take one that's been baked by someone else and we simply change the content. So for instance, if look at this general settings, at GoTav, we're not going to let people change font colors. So let's take that off the, off the set of instructions. So I'm going to edit this instruction. Now it just so happens, and it's a bit unfortunate, but it's, it's the way things work, is that there's not a pretty editor here. There's not the normal Atto, Ubute, lovely pretty editor. It just shows you HTML code. And again, people sometimes get a bit terrified by HTML. I'm going to show you some tricks later on to take that terror away. But this is the underlying code that makes up that set of instructions. So if I were to, for instance, and I know enough HTML, hopefully not to bugger things up, I'm going to take away the bit which is talks about font color and save that. So I'm going to reset this user tour and start again. Okay, so the, I've taken away the instructions about font color, it's not there anymore. So you can relatively rapidly take a boilerplate from someone else, tweak it, adjust it, fiddle around with it, and happy days. So what I want to show you next is some user tours which I've built, but more importantly, the thinking behind them, because this is where um, the, I think the role of, of those instruction designers in the room really kicks in. That thoughtful process about what is the messaging, who is the audience, and what, um, what message you're trying to convey to them. I'm going to do that by taking you over to show you first the user experience for a set of user tours which I've written for GoTave. Um, and I'm doing them through the eyes of a brand new user, a user that's using um, the new U-Butte Snap for the first time. So they may have some experience with Moodle or they may not. It might be, in fact, their very first time of logging in. And we need to be able to cater for that. So I'm going to log in as that person. And the first screen that they arrive to because of um, GoTo setup is what's called the My Courses screen. And the tour kicks in. And it basically says, well, we've got a brand new look. Let me show you around. So think about language, think about messaging, thinking about the amount of words. In fact, Alona was very good at reining me in. I tend to have too many words. I tend to talk too long and say too much. And she was saying, Greg, let's cut those words by about a half and you're about right. So we work really closely together. Um, specific tools for not editing teachers and student tools. Yes, absolutely. Get back to that too, Paul. Um, so uh, having two different tours for different audiences is also possible. I'll, I'll cover that later on. Um, and so let me take you through this tour. So the first thing it's going to do is introduce a student to the platform. It highlights bits of the screen. This is where your courses and units are going to be. If you don't have any yet, don't freak out. We're going to show you how to get some. Again, it's that thoughtful messaging because some students won't have anything yet. It's their very first time. So you think about the experience from the different users that might engage with this tour. Um, here's all the stuff, all the updates about your course. Language is really interesting and, crit and critical here. Use the, the terminology that's going to hit that audience. We've added the search all courses feature and it's actually the way, the mechanism by which um, at GoTo, students get into their courses. They use self-enrolment, and the way they do that is to search for it. So it was important to get the instructions around this good and clear for our target audience. Of course, that's a very GoTo specific process. So you, you bang these up to, to match your own sort of idiosyncrasies. And then we've done something a little different. We're actually directly linking them into a specific Moodle course. It's our learner's portal. What, what um, our strategy in 2019 is to have all of our resources centralised in a learner's portal and for all students to, to really see, treat that as the one-stop shop to find stuff. And so in the first tour, we're inducting them to that. 
So if they click on this link, it actually bounces them now into a Moodle course. And now another tour kicks in. This tour guides them through the navigation within a course. So you can see how you can think about these things almost sequenced. The first thing they do was go into the login screen. The next thing they do is to go into a course. They're two separate user tools, but we've deliberately scaffolded those together. So there's sort of a, a narrative through line that goes through those two. And it highlights some important things. We use the, the um, banner in a certain way, so we're highlighting that. And so it goes. I'm going to end out of that tour. So whilst there's a technical bit to that, most the most important bit of work is that instructional design piece, being really mindful about what you want to say, where you want to say it. A good way is to kind of roughly storyboard it on a whiteboard or what have you. Think about your words, think about your messages, keep them short and sharp. All of the, the you know, instruction design 101 principles. But if you get the messaging wrong, it's kind of defeating the purpose. So be really clear on that sort of stuff. And now I get to, I think, answer Shiraz and Paul's question, which is how do we create these and how do we target who gets what? If a user has multiple roles, will multiple tools start for them? No. So I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring some of the text chat. So um, the really interesting thing about user tours is they only run once for a user, unless that user chooses to run it again, or you at the administrative level reset that tour to force it to run out again. And I think Sean might give some interesting case examples of where he's used that reset feature for, for a good purpose. But the, the, the fact that I've now run this user tour means that it's been run for me unless and until I say I want it again. And any user can, can reset the user tours for themselves and see them for a second time. And I think that particularly for your editing teachers, um, for the people who are building your Moodle, they'll want to revisit some of these tools because you kind of forget it from time to time. So part of your instructions really is to guide people that they can reset their tours and in fact, I've seen some good examples of, of tours which say, don't forget you can reset your tour as the last step of the tour. It's kind of a nice um, circular way of thinking about things. So I'm going to show you the anatomy of the tours that you've just seen, but I also want to have enough time to respond to the questions from Shiraz and Paul. Sorry, I'm just going back a few. I know it's bad practice to use a back button, but I did it anyway. Right, so I have some um, tours here. One is the one for the My Courses interface, which is the first of the two tours that you saw a moment ago. And I want to show you another feature of this. If I hit the, the cog, which is the edit feature, this gives the kind of basic setup of the tour as a whole. And I get to answer, I think, some of Paul's questions and others. I, this is the name of the tour and a description. That bit's pretty uncontroversial. Where does the tour play? Well, it plays on the screen, which is in this case called slash my slash. That's the, the my courses screen. And that was in the URL. I'll, again, later on, I'm going to build one from scratch. I'll help you through how to find these elements. Where do you place the messages? The default is below etc etc but this is i think interesting to people is that you can be quite specific and targeted about your user tours you can target them to just a category so for instance if you've got categories set up to uh i don't know uh have a, a sandpit category where your teachers develop up um, courses well you could have a specific tour to just that category or if you've got categories for year levels you could have to, um, different tours for different year levels. So that can be a really handy way to target your tours. You can also target them to, to features of the course, um, whether it's got a particular format, uh, whether it's got a particular theme. So I can, in this case, I'm only targeting to the Snap theme because it only relates to Snap. I don't want other people to see that tour. It's going to confuse them. Um, and also, what role, and I think was it Shiraz had asked, can I have different tours for learners or different students? So you can match it to the roles. Remembering these are the go tape roles. Um, you choose the roles that match you. So if we want one that's specifically to learners that the teachers don't get, 
we would choose GoToFlearner. Uh, you can also target a very specific course. So you can just have a, a user to a run in one course and one course only. So it's, it's pretty flexible. Um, and Jeff's asked a question about resetting, which I'll get to in a sec. So I, I, it took me a moment, but now it's basically listing all of the courses that are in my platform. There are hundreds and hundreds of them, and I can target a specific course if I wanted to. Okay, so let's have a go at building one. And this is where some people are gonna get, like, I, I guess, flinch a little, because I have to get into technical, there's no way around it, but I'll, I'll, I'll take it gently. So we're going to create a brand new tour. Greg, just a question, are you recording? I am recording, or I hope I'm recording. Uh, yes, phew, <laughs> you gave me a moment for thought, but yes, I'm recording, so this will be available afterwards. Um, so, give it a name, oh, all right, I obviously had my focus in the wrong spot. The description, of course. A URL to match. Now this is um, where we're starting to get into the technical funky stuff. Imagine that I want a tour, like the one you've just seen really, that triggers whenever you're in a course, so that when a first person logs into a Moodle course. So what's my, my anchor gonna be for that? I look up to the, the URL string here, and I think, okay, this bit here says I'm in a course and I'm viewing the course. So if I copy this stuff here, which says course view, that's probably pretty good. Does that make sense? And I know I'm saying that to a, to a room of people who probably aren't on mine, but I'm hoping some of this stuff makes sense. And if you ever get confused, remember you can always look to um, one that's been built before you to get a kind of recipe. So I, I will do that. Um, I'll show you. If I still got it open in another tab, I probably have. Nothing like working with lots of tabs, huh? I'll go into the user tools. Rip off one that you've seen before. So here we go. This one looks pretty good. The percentage sign, by the way, at the end is just like a wild card. So anything can follow after that. So I don't necessarily need to write this in scratch. I can just find one which looks kind of right, like that one, and copy it into my own tour over here. Done. Um, the tour is enabled, just means it's gonna work. Um, where does the message get placed? It gets placed below, is it the default? You can change that on each step. I'll show you that later on. Um, show if target is not found. So it, it basically says, if I can't find that thing, skip over it. Now that becomes important because not always does every element appear on screen. So I, I might have a tool, user tool which has things which might have conditional elements. There aren't any here. So we'd skip over those. Um, so that's, these are all the defaults and I'm just leaving them as they are, but it's a nice safety net. If it can't find that thing, just skip that instruction, move to the next instruction. I decide where I want to display that, what um, themes I might want that to display upon, save changes and away I go. So I've created it, but it's got no instructions yet. So I need to start to do that. And this is where the next scary part steps in. I'm going to create a new... Just clarify something, sorry. Go ahead. It's John. Just quickly, I said show backdrop. I just, and you just... Oh, and I, I skipped that. What a shame. I should have made attention to that. I'll show you what that means. And I do, I would normally turn that off, on. Sorry. Um, oops, wrong link. <laughs> a backdrop basically fades out everything else except the thing you're focused on. So can you see how the, the, the screen is blackened out a little bit? It's, a, it's like on a, on a slightly opaque black background. I've actually changed the colour. It was white and I didn't find the colour contrast enough, so I've changed it to black. But you can see what that does then. It, great, it gives much greater focus and attention to um, the thing that you're pointing at. 
So I would normally turn that on. I can go back and tweak that later if I stuffed it up. Thanks, Greg. That's, that's great. Thank you. Okay. So now we need to start to think about what are we going to point at? And this is where we've got to know a little bit of CSS, but we don't have to know it from scratch. And if we've got someone else's we can copy, all the better, but assume we don't have that. What I'm going to do is to show you a little feature that's built into browsers that you may or may not, not have met. Um, it's called the Web Developer Console. Um, I tend to use the... Um, what's this one here? It puts all this yucky, weird looking stuff at the bottom of your screen. Can people see that? I think, I hope people can. And what I want to do is I want to find something that I, that I, yes, I, I can uh, write an instruction to. So imagine that I want to write an instruction that focuses on this uh, navigation on the left hand side. There's a great little tool, and it's this one here which helps us to pick an element on screen. And as we move our mouse over it, you'll notice that it highlights part of the screen. And so it's highlighted this bit of the screen. If I click on that, I get some information about what that is. And it says it's got an I I don't know whether this might be a bit small. I wonder whether I can make this bigger. Can I make the code inspector area bigger? I'm not sure that I can. Oh, OK. I'll do that again now that I've made that just a little bit bigger for you. So once I've got the bit that I reckon is right highlighted, I can see that the, there's some code here which says this has got an ID of course hyphen TOC. Can people see that? Kind of someone thumb, thumbs up me or something? Yeah, that's good, Greg. Yep, right. good. So. I can copy that and come over to here. And in the target, what I want to do is I want to do the, the message to display on a selector. This is where um, a little bit of CSS goes a long way because I know, and if you don't know yet, this is something that you'll need to if you're in the um, business of writing these, that when you've got an ID, and IDs are good, by the way, in CSS, they put the hash symbol in front of it. So, oops. Dopey dopes. So the thing to find that bit of the screen is a thing called hash course TOC. And then I think about, well, what do I want to display here? The title could be course navigation. And then the content. And I'm not going to fuss with content at the moment, but I'm just going to put some nonsense in. If I save that, I've written my first instruction. I then need to think about what the next thing I want to show is. Uh, but let me just see. This will be interesting because I've got two user tools in this. Let's see what happens. I've already got a, a course user tool, so I'm not sure what's going to happen when I overlap two of them. This might have been folly on my behalf. Ah, uh, yeah, the original one kicks in. Uh -huh. Oh, well, so be it. Um, we're going to use our, our imagination at the moment. I, I, I'll step back a bit. I've got another user tour that is higher up on the list. That is the, the original one that I wrote that's kicked in, uh, not the one that I'm just writing now. But I, I, I think Thank I hope, go ahead. Sorry, I just realised that um, that might answer Nina's question before she said, if a user has multiple roles, will multiple tours start for them? So if you made a tour for a teacher and another one for a student in the same course, uh, the conflict, so only one of them is going to run. If the, it'll, it'll, if the user is a teacher, the teacher one, in that example, the, the teacher one would run. If the user is a student, the student one would run. Sorry, sorry, if the user has two roles. Uh, the, yes, it will be the first one in the list. This is the, the priority list here. And in fact, what I'll do momentarily is I'll hide this one. 
and only show the new one so that we make sure that we're getting the right thing. And I, oh yeah, so there we go. I've got um, this new message and the text. Can people see that that's, that, that newly created tool has started to kick in? The position of this, I don't think I'm very happy with though. It's positioned below the item. So I'll take you back into those instructions and show you how you can change the positioning of an item. So for instance, I can go into that instruction that I'd written before, click on the actions, and instead of its default position, which is below, I could choose in this case for that instruction to be to the right. So I'll reset the tour again. And now it's displaying to the right. And this, I think, highlights John's observation earlier on. Um, it probably would be better with the backdrop because it's not very easy to see what I'm pointing at now. So why don't I edit the tour defaults and put that backdrop on? Because I just goofed before, I forgot to do it. Where is it? Uh, show with backdrop. I'm going to set this to yes. Save changes. Let's do a little reset. Much better. So can you see what it's now doing? Is it, it's highlighting the area. Because we've got that backdrop on, it fades out everything else. So it's much more clear what we're pointing at. And we've got our little instructions. And it, it's a bit of rinse and repeat now. It is trial and error. I do a lot of what you've just seen. I make a change. I go and reset the tour. I see whether it works. Most of the time I've stuffed it up somehow. I go back and I change it again. And so I go. Um, but it, that sort of notion of iterative design is actually really important to this stuff anyway, because you want to make sure your instructions are clear and always right. have us go ahead. Sorry, just a quick one with the backdrop, because I think that's a great feature. You did say that you did some modification of the default on that, not change it to black. Is that right? Like you made it darker? I did. I did. And now we're jumping into a different bit, which Sorry. is about theming, but it's important. And I'll share it. I'll share this with everyone. Um, there, there's two parts to this. One is the instructions that you're seeing uh, here. There's also the, the theme that controls the visual identity, basically, of Snap. And I've done a lot of work with Goto Snap to change that. But what, part of it was to change the colours because... Let me see if I can quickly reset the colours to what they were over here. Uh, rah, 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 rah. Bear with. Originally it was white. I'm going to change it to white. And for me, can you see how that doesn't have a lot of contrast? Um, so I wasn't happy with that. Uh, and it'll make more sense if I change it to something horrible like red. That's not as horrible as I thought, but you can see see what it's doing. Sure. Uh, Thanks. Thanks, Greg. What Thanks. what I've done in the theme of Snap is I've changed that color. I, I, for those technically minded, I'm going to copy the little code snippet and paste it into the text chat. But it's really only for someone who's doing the theming stuff. So I'm going to show you that anyway because you've asked. And it's quite low down. This one here. I'm going to share a little bit of code in the text chat for anyone who is doing theming and is so inclined to change its backdrop. I'm going to share the code for that. Uh, oops. So um, I put the little code in here, but most importantly, it changed the background color to black rather than white. And after that, everything else is, is copacetic. So changing that color, I think for my mind, um, has a great impact on its readability. So by me changing it to black, um, I think it has great, a much greater impact, particularly against the snap theme, which is a very um, uh, 
clean, white-centric theme. Like, it, most of the screen is white. And so to have some punch, changing that to black is not a bad idea. Righty row. So if I go back to my user tour screen, go back into the Snap Course Tour. We've got our first instruction. I'll add one more because I don't really want to label this point, but I do want to show you how you can bring a little bit of pretty to your instructions if you, if you care to. Um, so I don't know, maybe the next thing we want to highlight is the course dashboard, for instance. So again, we need to kind of get some little thing that we can hook onto to point at the course dashboard. So I'm going to try and find that. See if I can find something that looks pretty handy. This is just a link. And if I just aimed at links, it's not going to get the right thing. But the thing above it uh, is kind of interesting to me. So I'm going to try and hook onto this thing here. A lot of trial and error in this. I always try it, see, get it wrong, try again. So I'm going to add a new step. I'm going to have something that points at the... Um, now this, by the way, this is, earlier I said the, it had a, a selector of ID. This has got class and class for the CSS minded has a dot in front of it. So dot top footer. So um, that will help us to target this thing here. And what are we going to call this? We're going to call this course dashboard and content. But I don't just want dull, interest, uninteresting content now. I want to format that content up. And if I know um, HTML, I can do it here, but you've got to be pretty um, stubborn about that sort of stuff. Why don't I cheat a little bit? Uh, have I got a window open somewhere? I've got to have a window open somewhere. All right, I'll just go into any old course. Uh, we've got our little tour running there. Just trying to find a spot I haven't already vandalized. What I'll do is I'll create a label and then I'll put some stuff in that label. It'll make more sense in just a moment. The only reason we're going here is to get my nice little editor. Because if you don't know HTML, it's all a bit scary to write in, in pure code. But in the Addo editor, you can, um, that's right, Paul's, I'm just responding to Paul's chat. Um, hash is for ID, dot is for class, is correct. Um, so in here, I could have some text and I can make bits of it bold and I can make other bits italics and I might have some dot points. and maybe a numbered list. Of course, this is all um, nonsense and bunkum that I'm writing at the moment, but it's very much the quickest way for you to get kind of semi-pretty content because you can just use the WYSIWYG type of editor. And then at the end of that, once you're more than happy with what you've got, swap over to code view, copy all of this, and you can paste that as your set of instructions. So you don't have to, to um, know and love code in order to write this sort of stuff. You can just paste that into here. And isn't this going to look like a horrible mess when we play this one? But let's see how we go. Uh, save changes. And if I go over here now and run this tour again, there's our first instruction. And here's our horrible instruction. But you can see it's got the formatting, it's got the pretty. Um, and so it's a bit of rinse and repeat. You just got to be a bit bloody minded with some of this. Some of it's getting that targeting right. That's the trickiest bit. Finding the, the specific in, um, thing on screen that you want to highlight. But um, the, the starting point to all of that would be to start with someone, one that someone else has built and kind of reverse engineer it. You'll learn a lot by doing it the, in the backwards direction, so to speak. I've spoken a lot for a long time. There's a bit of chat running now. I'm going to open the mics and try to attend to some of the unanswered chats. But does anyone want to go on mic and ask a question, make a comment, that sort of stuff?
Oh, okay. Um, I can see Shiraz and Bernadette have got some uh, links to people who, who want to learn about writing CSS. That's always a good thing. Um, go ahead. Hey, uh, oh, just a quick question. I mean, it's all very intuitive, I guess, except for the bit where you've got to go in and grab the, the code, you know. On that's the, a, yeah, that's right, a, that's a hard, the hardest bit. Tricky bit, yeah, that most of us wouldn't have those skills. But I'm wondering, is there a tool available that you can run across a page and do that with? I know, and I know notwithstanding, I know you're using the, the browser tool to do that, but I'm wondering if there's an, uh, another kind of way to do it that's a little bit more user-friendly, maybe? Maybe not, I just... Um, there probably is, and I'll go looking for some tools afterwards. I've, I've become used to using the, the editor only because it allows us to do other things which can be quite useful. So yeah. this tool, which does, it looks, does look scary, I absolutely agree with that, but it can be really quite nice because if you're not sure that you've got the right thing, so I've selected something, is that right or not? I can go over here and change something to make sure I've got the right thing. So for instance, I could, I don't know, um, change it's no, not a hover color. What's a good example? Sorry, I probably haven't chosen the best example. Okay, if I do, if I change this background color to, oh no, I, I get a sense that very soon I'm gonna disappear in the weeds and lose half the audience. <laughs> I think the best thing to do is to partner up with someone who knows. Do that, yeah. buddy up with someone. If it's someone, um, if it's a sysadmin, if it's someone from your IT services team, buddy up with someone who knows a bit of HTML and shout them a coffee. That's what I do. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. I mean, look, I mean, it's not, you know, I mean, once you demonstrate it, you can see that it's fairly easy to learn if you get into it a few times. You're using the Firefox browser, I noticed. The other browsers like Chrome, is it a similar setup? And I'm, I'm Yeah, I'm, I, I, the only reason I was using Firefox and Chrome is I was logged in as two different users at the same time. I almost always just use Chrome. Um, and right. I actually find Chrome just a little bit easier. Um, the, the, this um, developer tools is a bit simpler on Chrome. So between the two of them, Chrome is a bit of an easier choice. Um, yeah. And so if you want one or other, I'd go with that. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, these tools, of course, will work on any browser once you've written them, but it's how you get to there that's the, you know, I guess the purpose of today and, and part of the challenge. And yeah, but I reckon for those that haven't had an opportunity to, to play with CSS or um, the very closest, simplest way would be to buddy up with someone who knows it, but also to um, hang off the coattails of ones that have been built before, have a look at some of the, the ones which are in that user tools collection and sort of reverse engineer them. Because those, those first lot that I showed you, I'm just gonna go back into them again. I'll go back to the user tools collection. Oops, sorry. So I remember I started this by showing you the tool repository. These are pretty bloody good. And they've got, I reckon, all of the anatomy of the tool that you need. You just have to change the words. So that's your low hanging fruit. Take one that's been built by someone else, reverse engineer it. Then when you get to a point where you're starting to build something that's bespoke, it's just to you, at that stage, you're gonna to need to delve into the weeds a bit. But that's probably some time away for most people because these things will cover a, a good chunk of change of what you need to do. Um, John, just a query. Um, sure, Jeff. Yeah, ta. Um, the difference between, uh, if, you, if we're using Snap, difference between the dashboard and personal menu. So uh, is that gonna, create a difference, if you know what I mean, when we're looking at um, creating, because I, I just as I can see there, and I've been, we use, we've been using the Boost um, dashboard tour, sort of from day one, um, but I'm thinking Snap, uh, Snap personal menu. 
Um, so the user tour would point to, I mean, Greg's probably right into this, but the user tour would definitely need to point to different elements on the page because they're yeah. different, the different elements themselves. So you'd, you'd have to customize the user tours for the different themes. That's correct. Um, there happens to be a couple of Boost tours that ship with user tours because Boost is kind of Moodle's preferred um, theme. And so they've actually already built one for you in some respects. No, you know, um, no, 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 no. I mean more that our default um, login view is now the personal menu rather than the dashboard. Right. And the Boost themes, of course, are all focused around the dashboard. If you add the course block to it, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Whereas now we're, we're going to be running Snap and uh, whilst the dashboard is still available, our um, default view at, at login for all users is the personal menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so when students log in on the Snap theme, their landing page is the personal menu rather than the Boost dashboard. That's what you're saying, right? That's right. What we're and seeing on Greg's view there. Yeah, and uh, and so. So, what's the question that comes from that? I'm sorry, I'm so, asking. so when when I look at most of the themes, they're all set up to, um, for a navigation around a dashboard, not the personal menu. The user tours you're talking about. Oh, so I, I've I've got one. And I'm more than happy to share it with you, but it's been built very much for um, uh, for GoTave. Yeah. So this one which is the one I showed at the start of things, um, it's targeted to Snap and to this interface. Right. And so it guides them through. Though I don't think there's anything off the shelf. That's why I had to build this one from scratch. So that My Courses page you're calling it is actually the personal menu for Snap. I call it My Courses because Moodle also calls it My Courses. So for instance, yeah. up here, unless you've changed its language, so yeah. you might have changed this language to personal menu or something like that. Oh, no, to, oh, we've just uh, we've gone through and changed everything with courses to unit or units. Yeah, that's right. I remember that now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm really conscious of the time. Gee, it's got away from me. And I, I owe Sean a tremendous apology because I was going to invite him in to talk about his um, use of, of um, user tools at Melbourne Poly. Do we have time for that, John, or have we burned yeah. out? Um, no, look, look, it's up to you. Uh, Greg, you, you've got plenty of time. I've actually got to leave and jump into another meeting, unfortunately. But um, as long as people are happy to stay on for a bit longer, I, by all means, I think there'd be a bit of interest there. So I'll okay. leave the room open and you just go as long as you like. Yeah, thank you. And, and tremendous apologies, Sean. I just carried away. Um, so if you could, Sean, if you're still with us and, and uh, willing, are you able to show the Melbourne Poly experience? I've freed up the desktop shares. So Yep. No, that's no problem at all, Greg. So what we did, I just, it come from a question that I had from a teacher about um, uh, pop-up notifications in Moodle. Um, they wanted to put, pop, like when we have surveys at different times of the year, they wanted to put up a pop-up notification. And that's when I thought, you know, the user tours could work. So we've just used it for um, a survey. As you can see here, the tour is not on, but if I just reset that, and <laughs> um, that, that's all I did. So what it is, is um, this is for the higher ed students. It is a, a survey, um, and obviously if I click on that, it takes them to the survey, but that's closed right now. So it was a fairly simple thing to do. Um, the other thing that I did do with it, and it was talked about a little bit, everyone can see this, I've just changed the, um, I've put a demo version of it here because I didn't want it to go onto all the other sites at the moment. But there was that thing about, I, I, Jeff mentioned it, that you can reset the tours. So users can reset the tours, but this link here as well, what I was doing, um, this survey was open for two weeks. And so every morning I would just go into here and I would click on reset. And then if I just reload that page, so I haven't, as a user, um, I haven't clicked on this link, but if I just reload that page, so if I'm going into it again, 
the tool comes up. So they kind of like that. It would just, um, yeah, I just had to go in each day and reset that, which was fine. And the, the other thing that was good about this tour or what we did do is we put it to different um, uh, just categories. So you can see here, this is only on this category. So it's not on any of the other categories. So um, in Moodle. And the other thing that was there as well is we just did it for a student. So the staff members and all the other um, users, they wouldn't see see it if they went to that site, went to any of those sites. I'm just going to cancel that because here's actually the real one. I've I've disabled that, but if I go into the the real one, you'll see. I just want to show you that you will see it's on. So here, what it will do. So we've got ours um, Moodle sites uh, organized by like the categories here, and it will actually flow through to every site that's under this category that a student hits, and it'll only do it once. So I even if they did it say they're in this accounting one and they're in a, a number of different sites under that, it would only show it to them once. It wouldn't show them every time they went to a different site, which um, we found was good as well. Um, so that's basically it. We just wanted to use it for notifications and it was just another interesting way of using the tours in that, um, that setup. Okay, any questions from that? No. Great idea, Sean. Well done. Yeah, and uh, what's really interesting about that is a really effective and impactful tour, which has one, one um, set of instructions. Yeah. And because it's situated in the middle of the page, none of the guff about or well, where what does that point to. So, I think thinking about these user tours in a broader way really opens up their opportunities. To um, I, I see um, some side chat about you know, policies and procedures and what have you. There's all ranges of different ways that you may try to target this, particularly when you combine them with the notion of categories and roles. So you might want to tell all the, the students in a particular teaching department, if your if you're, um, categories are structured that way, of a certain event, maybe it's a, a, an excursion or whatever it is. So there are lots of different ways that these could be um, utilised. Um. Barry, or oh, Paul, sorry, no, they can't be displayed on a date range. So that's, that's I guess, I, I see that in the chat. The only thing that you can do is you can turn it on and then you can, you know, force the tour to be redisplayed for the users who are going to get it. So that was the only, I guess, downside of it, but it still worked. I just went in there once, once a day and reset it. Well, mindful of the time and we've already run over, um, can I open it up for any final questions or comments, thoughts? Um, all right. If I can just ask and say thank you. It's been a very useful webinar. Oh, thank you. Yeah, same from our end. It's been really good over here. No, yeah, great. Well, there's a lot going on in this one um, and we've covered a fair bit of ground. So I think the recording will be useful to those people in the session, also some that are not. If there are others within your um, teams that you want to circulate it with, um, I'll, I'll work with the eWorks team to get that out somewhere. And I'm sort of turning to you, Bernadette, um, you know, maybe on your YouTube channel or whatever, but I'll, I'll get um, Bernadette maybe to communicate that out. Um, the only thing is, Bernadette, do you have everyone's contact details from this session? Oops, no. Can can <laughs> everyone um, send me an email? Oh, I'll, yeah, if all of you can send me an email um, and request to uh, have the link, I'll, pro I'll probably send it out to everyone, but just in case there's some, someone here that's not on that list, um, I'll send it to you. Yeah, particularly when there's more than one people in, person in the room, um, you might want to send those details. So. All right, I reckon we did pretty well. Um, so I, 
I'll hang around for another five minutes if anyone wants to sort of get deep in the weeds, but otherwise I'll say good day to you. So feel free to drift out or if you want to hang around just for a few more minutes, I'm happy to stay around as well. Otherwise I'll say good day. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. That was great. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Great. No worries. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Stop Greg. the recording now. Stop the recording? I will. Thanks.